Hi, Gina Timmons. Who's calling? I'm calling you from the Abbeydale Mental Hospital. What's the matter? We need you to come in right away. I have the unfortunate duty of informing you that a terrible accident took place this morning. Όπρα εκείνη η Ραμπτίβη, ναι κομεδέρες μάλε δικτατέρα, οι νόμπερε του, οι ναβόρυβους κομεδές εάν τσκούν τις διεύους του Ιατού. And we will prove the last April 30th on Mala Island, Colonel Kortzmeier was murdered by Brian Basco in cold blood. The defense will attempt to confuse you with trickery and lies. Τους γερμινάβη τίβη εν κομεδές έλβας τέρα, εν σου δωρεύουν τους του οι βέσκελες πάνε εδώ, πρέπει να πάνε, εν τέρα αν δεν κουασούν τους εσκούι εμπούλβις, εις και την κούμπε λένε for the last time, Mr. Basco, tell us what you remember. I don't remember anything. Oh, yes. Amnesia. If you think you'll get off by pretending to be insane, then you've really lost your mind. I want order! <laughs> Έκει που ο κορένινος δέους Άδαμ με του ψωρία εις τούνικας πελικίας ετήν του ιδέως. Μετά είτε και Άδαμ πάρ' του είσαι σκουασιούνους εθνωρισίας. And given the doubts created by the defendant's mental health, he will be admitted into Happy Dale Psychiatric Hospital, where Dr. Bennett will determine whether his supposed insanity has any basis in reality. I'm postponing this trial until then. No! I'm not crazy! Gina! Brian? It's me. What's your game? You call me telling me I have to identify a headless body to say it's yours, and then you vanish for two days? Get me out of here. I went to your bogus burial and... All right. Where are you? It's buried in my grave. I'm gonna get you out of there. This is insane. Get me out of this tomb, say nothing to anyone. Be careful, murderers waiting at exit. Battery low, come quick, banana. Banana? I don't know what went down in Hawaii or what they did to you in that psychiatric ward. I don't know why you escaped or why you faked your own death. I don't know how you got down there. I don't even know whether you're the Brian I know. All I want is for everything to go back to normal. That's all right, though. I won't ask for help, I won't call the cops, and I won't leave the cemetery. But I will get you out of there. You win, Brian. We'll play it your way. It came with a really cute purple ribbon, too. Hmm, I don't know. Carrying that around would be a chore. But the ribbon alone? It'll be a great souvenir from Brian's phony funeral. Huh? What a weird machine. Wonder what that's for? A ladder here? Huh? Hello, dear. Hello? Up here, on the roof. Uh, do I know you? Well, of course not, dear. I'm Agatha Safran von Rubenstein, PhD in parapsychology and poltergeistian phenomena from the University of Virginia. 
member of the North American Parapsychological Association, and also I'm a medium. Because I like it. Nice to meet you. I'm Gina. Gina Timmons. Hmm. It's amazing, my dear, how much pain is in your aura. Come inside. I'll help you stop your suffering. Hurry, I'll be right down. Well, this is an interesting start. Agatha? Hello, dear. Let's start from the very beginning. How long is it you've been dead now? What? No, I'm alive. As far as I know. Oh, well. Isn't that a shame? You really could have helped me out here. Well, uh, sorry. Helped you what? To find out whether the spirits in this cemetery are on my side or not. Reverend McCormick asked me to find out why the poltergeists infesting this graveyard are here. But first, I must know if they're on my side or not. Is something weird going on in the cemetery? Weird? Not at all. Well, the only strange thing is it seems like a UN summit with such an international set of spirits. Besides that, just the usual. Miscellaneous poltergeists and a hideous past tormenting the primordial energy here, which, by the way, is centered precisely inside this crypt. Why do you say the cemetery seems like the UN? Because there are spirits from many different countries. China, France, Germany, Spain, Brazil, Sweden, Egypt, Australia. And a few from right here, like you. Agatha, I am not a ghost. I'm not even dead. You're not? Well, have it your way. What's so hideous about the past of this crypt? A horrific, shameful, and hideous crime. Uh, during the Civil War, before this graveyard was here, this used to be a Yankee prison. Wow, how interesting. Go on. On the night of April 24th, 1864, a captain of the Confederacy, Noah Kilgore, was waiting to be executed. He had come to terms with death. But during a change of guards, his luck changed too. The lieutenant in charge of watching him was Philemon Kilgore, his own brother. Two brothers fighting on opposite sides? Civil war is always fratricidal, dear. Brother against brother, that's what it consists of. But anyway, Noah pleaded with his brother to let him go. And though Philemon didn't want to betray his army, his brotherly love won out, and he let his brother escape. What's so horrific and shameful about that? Sounds like a nice story to me. Almost corny. Don't jump the gun, dear. As soon as Philemon set him free, Noah whacked his brother over the head and left him unconscious. He exchanged clothes with Philemon and stuck him in the cell. Of course. The brothers bore such a resemblance that nobody noticed the difference, right? Yes. But Noah didn't want his brother to give up the big secret, so he set fire to his brother's cell. End of story. The end? That awful murderer didn't get punished? Well, eventually he died, of course. Several years later, after becoming a hero for the Yankees. A war hero? That's not fair. Wait, dear. After he burned Philemon alive, a voice tormented Noah in his dreams. It said, come to me, brother. As I burn, so shall you. And? And one day, Driven mad by Philemon's voice, Noah returned to this place, and sure as sin, he was burned alive. Huh? And what was the purpose of telling me this saga? Noah and Philemon's tormented souls are the most powerful in this graveyard. They make up its primordial energy core, and I need their consent before contacting any other spirits. So what do these poltergeists, which Reverend McCormick is so scared of, do? Oh, lots of mischief. You know how these spirits can be. They drag chains, howl, lift their skirts when nuns come by, suddenly appear before visitors. They're such rascals. Okay, this is getting pretty gross. Let's talk about something else. Tell me about that cable you slid down. My parabiothermal cable? 
Well, it detects sudden changes in temperature caused by paranormal phenomena. Ah, like in the movies, when a ghost is going to appear and everything starts to look cold? More or less. But in movies, they never quite get these things right. The more subdued spirits, like the ones in this crypt, display their temper using temperatures. If they are displeased by a presence, they emit heat. But if they are happy, they give off cold. How does that cable work? Very well, dear. Its filaments are temperature sensitive. If there is a variation of more than 20 degrees Celsius in less than five seconds, they send a signal to the ectothermal scanning machine outside the crypt. By analyzing its readings, I am able to determine the temperament or mood of the spirit that caused the thermal change. Pretty simple, isn't it? So why did you put it right here? Because I need to know whether the spirits in the crypt who are in charge around here are happy with my presence. If they emit cold temperatures, I can make contact with any spirit in this cemetery. But if they give off heat, then I'd better clear out. And Reverend McCormick will just have to find another medium. Fascinating, Agatha, but let me ask you something else. See you later, Agatha. Whenever you want, dear. There's a bit of everything. A backpack, a tape recorder, a Ouija board, a dried out lemon, a flashlight. I bet that flashlight could be useful, but Brian always says that when you find things like this, the batteries are always dead. Agatha, does that flashlight work? I just changed the batteries yesterday. Take it if you like. Well, that proves Brian's first law wrong. Yikes! What a welcoming place. Huh? A tunnel! Wait a sec. If I've got this right, then behind that wall is the hole they buried Brian in. Not that that improves things much, but at least now I know I have two options. Either move the slab of stone off the grave and start digging, at the risk that somebody might see me, or break through this wall. Doesn't look easy. But at least I'm not out in the wide open with nosy people walking by. Let's see what this says. Captain Noah W. Kilgore, 1823 to 1864. A Confederate soldier buried in New York. That's weird. Yes, that's the thing to do. Darn, someone could have put a whole tunnel lever or something else that might make it easier for me to reach Brian. I have no other choice but to remove one of these blocks of stone. But which? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Mm. I think it'll be best to choose that one in the middle with the ring. It'll be easier to remove than the ones on the side. It gives me the creeps, but Brian is behind that wall. So if I don't take the urn, I might end up spilling its contents. Although, it would be worse if they poured out into my pocket. Didn't something like that traumatize a character on Six Feet Under for years? According to Agatha, it detects sudden temperature changes, both hot and cold. He seems like a real VIP. Lieutenant Philemon J. Kilgore, 1823 to 1864. After Agatha's long-winded explanation with all those plot twists and unexpected deaths, I can't remember if this was the good brother or the bad one. Tomb of the Unknown Kilgore. Derek J. Kilgore and the bizarre speaking appendage Kilgore joined together even in death. Melanie S. Kilgore. Granny, we will miss your gingerbread cookies so much. Rex, enjoy your bones for all eternity. Graves, graves, and more graves. Huh, I hope I don't have to find anything among them. 
It would take me everlasting eternity. I've been here before when the hearse brought Brian in. Rolls Royce. And they say dying is the worst thing that can happen to you. Father, I'm trimming the hedges. If you need me to put the coffins together, ring the bell, signed by someone named Luann. It's fairly dark in there, but I think it might be a maintenance room. Man, it's darker in here than when we came for Brian's pseudo-funeral. I guess Reverend McCormick turned out all the lights when he left. Yeah, looks like there's something underneath. A trap door! Better not keep their dog in there. Ah. I might be able to use that. Considering where I found it, it seems pretty clean. I can't see it too well from here, but yes. I think it might be a box. Let's see what happens if I climb on this. Why, yes. It was a wooden box. Think there's something inside? Hey, a key. I wonder what it's for. I don't know if they'll fit, but ready. Okay, Gita, you spilled more outside the box than you poured in, but I don't think the party concern will notice. You haven't been sleeping well, you're exhausted and nervous, and do you know how hard it is to pour ashes without expert help? Completely useless, I'm... Let's see if it fits this lock. Well, looks like I managed to get that janitor girl to come. I hope Reverend McCormick doesn't show up at some point and ruin my plan. No, stealing one cent of that money would be worse than holding up every bank in the state. Hmm. Okay, once I rescue Brian, I'll bring it back here. Someone told me that in the olden days, these baskets didn't have such long handles, but they added them when it was discovered rich people always sit as far away from the aisle as possible. Hello? Wait, you're the gal from that crazy guy's funeral. Is that where I saw you before? Yeah, I guess. Uh, okay, but don't come crying to Luann. I'm busier than a bee and a beehive. Gotta run, see ya. Wow, you are so insensitive. Oh, all right, sorry. My sincerest condolences and all that. <sighs> Thing about this job is that you just get sick of all them weepy widows always crying at you. Anything else? What's got you so busy, Luann? Well, this here, can't you see? I've got to get these coffins together before the tombs for everyone, Charity Benefit. 
but the instruction manual's in gibberish and I can't understand a word. <coughs> but if anyone can get this done, I can. I've never heard of do-it-yourself coffins before. Me neither. But the old reverend bought these unassembled on the internet and I've just got to deal with it. They're cheaper than pig's milk, but they're good enough for your final rest. Hmm, well, I can think of a case or two in which that might just come in handy. What exactly does tombs for everyone consist of? Well, it's this thing where if you're poor and you kick the bucket, everything's on the house. We pay for the coffin, the hole, the wreath, the stone slab. As the old reverend says, we won't die for you, but almost. What's up with the manual? Well, it's in Swedish, and not even a schoolmaster can understand it. It's like Chinese, but worse, because you can find a Chinaman anywhere, but who in tarnation knows where to find a Swede? Would you let me see the assembly manual? I don't know, maybe I could help. Besides being a rich city slicker, you figure you're some sort of engineer, huh? Well, take it. Doesn't look easy, but we'll have to try. You thought I'd just have one manual and wouldn't let you borrow it, huh? Well, Luann's accepting help today, so if you can understand any of that gibberish... Why are you in such a hurry? Because I met this manly stud, and he's waiting for me to get off work. His name's Ernie, and he is the finest gentleman I've ever come across. I think I know that Ernie guy. If you try to steal my man, I'll slap you silly. Ernie's mine, you got that? Man, for once I reel in a hot catch and a city broad tries to steal him away from me. So he's waiting for you? Are you guys going on a date somewhere? He's taking me bowling. Ain't as serious as going to the Sunday ball, but since they don't have them around here. You like the guy that much? Better than a new hoe. Man, I'm even thinking of giving up my sacred chrysanthemum to him. Oh, my. How did you meet? I was hacking away at the hedges. He came over and said some pretty things like that any sane man would fall in love with me. <coughs> that he couldn't avoid falling for little old me. For me not to stop loving him and stuff like that about love and the like. Let's stop gossiping about Ernie. You stop gossiping. I got dibs on him and he's mine. What's behind that big door? My tools. But get close to them and I'll punch your lights out. They're mine, got that? Dang, it's getting colder and colder in here. Just out of curiosity, what kind of tools do you have? Man, I got more than the little furry balls on an old sweater. They're mostly garden tools, but I also got the circular saw and the hole-making thing and the one that puts staples and the circular saw and... Uh, you already said that. What, the circular saw? That's because I like it more than the field without cow pies. It cuts through metal things like a hot knife through butter. What if I asked you for one tool and promised to return it right away? What if I smacked you once but then smacked you again two seconds later? Okay, already forget it. Talk to you later. I don't want to make you late. So what do you think you've been doing up to now? The city slicker's not too swift. It's not very powerful, but since the <laughs> weather's pretty nice cold. today, who cares? Seems like it's been here for years. According to Luann, what's behind the door is a circular saw which she is in love with. Hammer, pliers, file, scissors. This thin one here seems most familiar to me. This goes. Yes, the water won't come out of this. Well, there are still some ashes stuck to the bottom, but, oh well. Yes, I can turn it into a water bottle. 
If it doesn't have any holes in it, that is. <laughs> Looks like a cartoon character glove. How weird, it's on, but it's empty. Well, of course. Who would be such a numbskull as to put something in there? Why's that? Because it's always on the fritz, and no sooner do you stick something in it than it goes pow, and it deep freezes everything to the core, so careful. Man, I don't know why I'm even warning her. Okay, why the heck not? Let's see how long it takes to freeze. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Pow, it's already frozen. That's it. I can use the urn as a thermos so that the ice doesn't melt or freeze my pocket. Oh, I'd forgotten I put the water in the urn Shoot! before. But hey, this plant over here looks like it's dying of thirst. Luann was right, it's frozen solid.